This film study is sponsored by Mississippi Land Bank. Land Bank. Right, they're going to motion across and set up two by two and actually get a guy in a flat open over here for a completion on first down. So just watch the play. See a motion across. And then you get three out to that side, five out in the route, throw it underneath, and it's completion. It's not a huge play, and I just thought we'd take a look because there are a couple things that interested me. You know, Alabama does some different stuff that other – teams don't do sometimes in coverage. They start out with what looks like bunch three receivers with a back to that side. Okay, so pre-snap, you've got one, two, three, and four potential receivers all to the short side of the field with the ball on the right hash. So the way Alabama lines it up is this interesting zone three deep coverage. Now it looks like, you know, over the ball, it looks like two deep safeties, right, splitting the hash. But when you snap it, what you see is, you know, one staying down, one soft. It could be quarters and a half, um, you know, coverage, quarter, quarter, half coverage. But it also could be a, an interesting version of a kind of a three because he's there, he goes here, he's deep, and, and one stays up. So whether it's quarter, quarter, half, or cover three, you, you basically get the same thing because of a four down front. Um and then on the snap, you, you wind up with the motion. They have balanced it. Now you're two here and two here to the wide side. But you're going to get them all out, including the back. What I notice is on the snap, too, you get a vertical release from that tight end. So he pushes up past the linebackers and immediately gets in the face of the safety. Um, you're also you know getting that sideline. But the back is going to trail him, and he's going to go kind of vertical here. And what it does is it sort of holds – a flat defender inside the numbers it just kind of holds in there. That's the effect that it has anyway, and it gets a guy open on the sideline. If you see what I mean right here, this defender, I would think, you know, based on the coverage, is that corner obviously is dropping deep. He's either got a deep quarter or a deep half, depending on what their call is. It's probably quarter, quarter, half. Regardless, if he's back, that means a guy in the circle is going to be, I think, responsible for the flat area of this field right here. But he stays inside, and I think it's simply because he's got a second receiver in his face right here. It just kind of holds him in there. The quarterback reading that short side of the field fires it out there. All right, so they're going to take that outside receiver here, run a curl into the middle of the field. So he's going to go inside, get in the middle of the field, come back to the quarterback, catch a curl right in the middle. We'll watch the play, and I'll just show you a couple things. Tight bunch formation, tight end stays in a protection, zip, and – throw and catch. It's interesting here a couple things. One is pre-snap with a tight end to the left, it's two receivers, and then two to the right. So it's this balanced two-by-two two bunch. But they sort of throw just a little bit of a curveball on the call here because the tight end goes in and stays in protection, and instead the back releases on his route. So pre-snap they show you a two-by-two um, two and you're thinking you could get two guys out on both sides of the route if the back were to stay in. But then when they snap the ball, it's actually three to one side and a single receiver over here. So it's just some of the little formational things that teams will do. You snap the ball. They showed you the safeties in the middle of the field kind of giving you a clue. But then on the snap, when this safety comes down, it's pretty clear uh, to the quarterback, I think, that what you're getting is three deep. Single safety in the middle deep corner, and corner is going to have a deep third, so three deep in the coverage. Snap it. You can see what they're doing on the route is outside of receivers crossing the inside. I'm going to curl up. Linebackers find a throwing lane. Inside receiver, I'm going to switch, and I'm going to curl up, find a throwing lane, and we're given the high-low option by swinging the back out to that side. So it sort of gives you that almost like a variation of a flat curl. It's just it brings it a little closer to the middle of the field. Protection is really good. On the protection, by the way, you know, Alabama's only rushing four right here. One, two, three, and four. But the tight end staying in for AM means they've got six in protection. You got six in protection versus four rushers, and it's plenty of time. Quarterback knows he's got no pressure. And then find a throwing lane zip for a first down. When you see it from behind, you can see what he's looking at. See linebackers drop. Okay, and this is what I'm talking about. So they switch it up. Here comes a curl. It's coming to his right on the outside. Outside receiver's getting to the middle field curling, 
and we're given you know a, a low option with the back out of the backfield. So if you isolate linebackers, which they're kind of doing, you got one dropping underneath the zone, you got outside flat responsibility zone, and another linebacker in the middle zone. Then where are the throwing lanes, right? And and by the way, you got one more. He's right here. So there's your underneath defenders, and what they're giving you then are these windows. You got a window here if you could get a receiver in there. You got one in the middle. You got another coming out here. It's just a matter of finding the throwing lane where the defenders aren't and picking one and firing it in there. And based on the movement of the linebackers, here's your guy right in the face of the quarterback. Protection holds up. Step in there and drill it. It's all about protection first and then finding throwing lanes. Take a minute to, to draw all of this one up so y'all bear with me, but they're going to hit the tight end off of play action here down the field. So you'll remember this play. They play action it, step back, zip, big play tight end, and then make the safety miss. Really poor tackle attempt by the safety there. I'm not really sure what he's trying to do. And eventually get him down to the ground. And here's – there's a lot of impressive stuff, okay? First of all, on the play design. You know, it's play action – and they've lined up with three receivers here, including the tight end to the left, a single receiver to the right. But look at everything that's happening. They're motioning across. Okay, so now they've balanced it. It's going to be two by two. But then the play action comes back this way, right, to affect the guys you ran away from. And that's where the football is actually going to go to. And I think there's a lot of purpose in what they're doing here. So let's look at the offense. Motion them across. And then – pulling the backside guard okay so again you know everybody blocks this way one guy pulls out in front here comes the back and so if you're a linebacker or a safety that side you have to respect the ability they may throw it I mean they may run it and so you you stay there play action just long enough for the tight end to get past you okay so there's a lot of purpose here in, in the way they've designed the pre-snap and the motion against this defense you see that happen so I want to go back here goes uh, the snap. Here comes a pulling guard out this way. Here comes a back, and right now we have to respect he may get it. And watch what these next-level defenders do. Linebacker play side, and in the middle, you got two of them. They step. Safety's going to step as well, and he's what's lined up over the tight end. So watch those guys be affected by this. See that? Look at, look at just linebacker safety. If you look, linebackers are already on the play fake coming downhill. Um Watch this safety and watch his movement. Watch how it affects him. All you need is one step. He's going back and immediately puts on the brakes, and now I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to have to come downhill. That just helps to create this void back here that you're going to get the tight end into. And then you go, well, why is – if that's where we're throwing the ball and the tight end's releasing, and I can already see that the quarterback now has the ball and we're throwing it, then why is this guy back here – running away from where the ball is going to eventually go to, right? Like, why is that happening? That's what I'm saying is sort of impressive is that even though they get beat on the play, look what Alabama's doing. I don't know this. This is just a guess, but I think they have lined up in quarter, quarter, half coverage. And and what that means is he's this guy's responsible for a quarter deep of the field. This guy's responsible for a quarter deep of the field, and this guy's responsible for a half deep of the field, quarter, quarter, half. And I'm giving that clue because I got this hard corner down here uh, on that half side, which is to the right. I think that's what the call is pre snap for Alabama because they are in three by one receivers pre snap, and that's what we've seen. But in a matter of seconds, as he motions just before the snap, I look. And I notice this player back here actually gives some sort of hand signal um, as if to say, okay, if you look and you see me, you're going to see on this side that I'm showing you I'm moving up and now we're rotating back out of this back to almost like a, a three. not a Maybe not a three, but technically because this corner doesn't know. He's just going to be up and he's going to lock on that guy as if we're playing him in man because he's that short corner on a – quarter quarter half he just says he's motioning my side I'm coming down here I'm going to get him and this safety's trying to adjust to get back to the middle so I I really I really think 
Alabama's doing all they can. It's just a heck of a play design. You see that? Like who is, I mean, if you watch him right now, he sees motion come his way. All right, keep your eye on that safety and tell me who he's hand signaling to right here. You know who I think it is? I think it's his teammate who was lined up across from him. A 14 is looking back to make sure, and he's telling him, okay, I see it. I'm going down. You're now free to drop back in that uh, zone responsibility on your side. Problem is, as soon as he turns his head, 14 sees run coming at him. He puts on the brakes. See what I mean? Here comes run at me. I've put on the brakes. I'm the safety. We're rotating. i got to get back to the middle. And this play action to this side helps to get that tight end in that void. And the other thing is, you initially you start quarter, quarter, half. So this corner here, uh, for whatever reason, is taking an inside position on this guy. It's not really like a man-to-man -man deal, but it turns into that because he turns his back. He's got his back turned right here, this void. There's so much going on that I don't really know everything. I just know, again, safety went to the middle. He hung up there so we get a free release. And the corner is, I'm putting my butt to the field. I'm trying to pin him to the sideline. And so we got him open right there. And then it's a matter of his quarterback get it in there before the safety gets over, and he does. Now, I would imagine we got to get a better tackling attempt from the safety right here when he gets over there. We got to have something a little better than that. Makes up for it later, sticks his head in there. All right, here's a touchdown to the tight end. This sort of tight bunch two by two formation was pretty good to uh a and m in the ball game well, watch the play they drop seven and cover three they rush four it's blocked up well enough and he buys a little time and then throws himself a touchdown here so how did he get open well it's uh pretty clear this is cover three i mean there's no question that's what that is pre-snap with a free safety right back here in the middle of the field it's cover three there's your four underneath in the zone here's your four coming it's a very base defensive look uh, right here it's not covered very well i'll show you what i mean on the snap they are getting four out in the route and the fifth is the back who's going to check and then come out because nobody comes just a four man he's checking to give you six man protection if you need it but you don't so outside a receiver who was up front on the line releasing vertical right into the face of that three deep corner and getting to his inside shoulder and sort of stretch it back in here to the hash to maybe affect the safety. Tight end lines up. He's going to trail him, trail him, trail him. They're not switching, but then he's going to get and be the outside vertical and threaten them out there. you got to put them in a bind out here and who you're going to cover deep. And because it's three deep, you know, the safety, He can, if he goes here, he can't be here, right? He can't be two places at once, so you're getting double verticals over here on this side as well. So it's four verticals, which puts three deep coverage in a bind. Here's what we mean by that. So if a protection holds up, you rush four and protection holds up. I got a vertical up the hash. Free safety already now has to make a decision. He's backpedaling. And I got a vertical outside and corners got to make a decision. So the first bind is right here because, uh, he can't be in two places at one time. And I think, you know, this is one of those two where they've got another guy open because safety just sort of hung here in the middle of the field. That inside vertical's coming open. So, you know, you really have a couple options. We're going to have a guy open here, and we're about to have a guy open here as well just because my route's going to beat their coverage. The only thing here that I'm confused about is why this corner, when he knows the safety is back here to the middle of the field, is I'm a little confused as to why that corner would trail this vertical that's on the inside. You know, it's almost like there's a call in here for Alabama that is telling them we're going to wait everything to our right, which is, you know, to the defense's right. Here's what I mean by that. Like, you get verticals, you're thinking to your right hand, you're thinking to your right hand. And the reason is because the deep defender on this side, again, has his – but turn to the field and is looking, you know, to the sideline, right? So if he's not going to help any at any at all back here on this inside vertical, safety knows he's got to do it. It's almost like, you know, maybe that's how they're waiting. And if that's the case and nobody is threatening 
the flat or underneath, this defender has to turn and run with that vertical, right? Because you can't cover this otherwise with that defensive look. So it's either a mistake here by this corner to stay inside and not be out here on the numbers, filtering that back into the safety. That's either a mistake there or it's a mistake here to not be threatened with anything underneath, but to stop and let him run past you. So somebody is um, not doing their responsibility and they're giving up a touchdown right here, partly because of protection held up. Goal line, heavy package, they're going to motion in the receiver, play action, get him open in the back of the end zone for a touchdown. Watch the play. Two tight ends in there, heavy package, play fake, draw him up, throw him wide open, classic goal line play versus four offenses and teams that can really run the ball. So Alabama's in man-to-man down here. It shows you how important it is to stay with your responsibilities. They're man-to-man on outside receivers, okay? They have two tight ends in the ballgame, both here, but they're both eligible receivers. Here's why. One's on the line of scrimmage, one's off, and a receiver's off. So these are three eligible receivers and a tight end on the formation. The back's an eligible receiver, too. Uh, Alabama has one, two, three with their hands down, Two walked up. There's a five-man front, and the sixth is going to walk up. There's six. They're in straight man-to-man, no question. So the man-to-man responsibilities are going to be corner on outside receiver. Uh, you know, next defender outside on that tight end. Linebacker or one of those linebackers is going to have tight end back, and then the other linebacker, if he goes out, is going to have that back. So there's your straight-up zero coverage man-to-man responsibility everywhere, and I just think it's the motion uh, the corner doesn't have his eyes in the right place. He's looking at the ball. And the quarterback, while his man and man-to-man on this play action, runs right by him. And the corner's looking in the backfield. So I think that's a, uh, you know, not jumping into your responsibility. But again, they help it by the formation. Interesting uh, play here on uh, third and four coming out of their own territory. Big first down for them. They're going to release the back to a three becomes a four receiver side and run a little pick play get him open here on third and four now it drops one out of there gets him open not the best throw but a great catch and that was a big first down coming off their own uh, nine yard line alabama lined up with four on the line of scrimmage you know to begin with and showed potentially bringing six right you could if they jump into some sort of man-to-man if the call is for him to definitely be out, quarterback's thinking I could get rid of it quick because you can only block five uh, in, in when you get five out in a route. So if all six of these guys come, I got to get rid of it quickly, right? And on the snap, they don't. What happens, they try to fool you. They run those two guys in the middle. As a quarterback, you're going to have your eyes on them, but then you can see what they're doing. They're dropping both guys off the edge back here uh, into coverage, so they're only rushing four. That may have helped to get the ball thrown quickly, but it's third and four. So I do believe it's a it's a you know a zone coverage look, but guys are trailing receivers, either matching some routes or trailing them. You get an in break here, you get another in break here, and they very intentionally, whether it's linebacker coming out of the middle or in this case coming off the edge, they very intentionally are sort of creating a pick right here where a defender can't really run through. And what quarterback's going to read right here, I think, is, you know, if you get a guy who stays and he passes these inside receivers off and on the outside they stay there, ball's not coming to that running back. It's going to come inside to one of these curl routes past the uh, first down sticks. If he moves or drops, which he has right here, you know, he drops. I don't know if it's the read on the inside or not, what the key is. It's a good job by this receiver not to hit the guy and get a call but you're kind of picking him, slowing this linebacker up where he can't fly out of there. And if I put it on him, I got a great chance for him to get me the first down. So a little pick play, designed nicely. Really good catch by the running back. Here's a third and eight play where Alabama was able to get off the field. And a and is going to motion in. This is empty, three by two. They're going to motion in him to the three-receiver side. He's going to mesh across the middle here with uh, number two here. So they're going to – you know, basically mesh over the ball. You got a lot of other routes built into this, but we'll focus on those. 
Alabama brings five, including the safety, and the throw is there. It's caught just short of the stick. So what Alabama did is they jumped into man-free coverage right here. Um, so if you go back, you, you get motion coming in. <laughs> this is a three-receiver side, two receivers here, and, and Alabama is – Lining up with guys off the line of scrimmage, right? Only three down here. They disguise it really well. On the snap, all these three are coming. Linebacker comes, so there's four. And then this safety is going to fire, and that's five. Now, you have five to block, but it's really hard to pick that up uh, if the ball doesn't come out, you know, pretty quick. And if they can sort of bring that safety on the same side as a linebacker and these guys don't pass it off, which on this play, they don't get it passed off. So quarterback's about to get hit. Rotate the safety back to the middle. He's a free safety. And everybody else jump into a man-to-man -man responsibility running with people. Um, he's going to wind up on the outside here. One of these will be in man-to-man -man and man-to-man -man here because everybody else is, is uh, coming. So uh, focus on the mesh in the middle. Here it comes. Okay, so number two, he's coming here. We're going to pick for each other motion. I'm coming across there. And I think this is who actually winds up getting the football here motioning. I mean, uh, meshing in the middle. Safety comes on the same side as the linebacker. You see what happened right here. They picked it up. Center took on the nose, okay, and then the right guard picked up the linebacker. But because the safety is right here coming late, the left guard is sort of wasted. He doesn't have anybody on his side, and he doesn't get back around here, doesn't realize there's a safety coming. He's still looking to his side. And it's actually this safety, the fifth guy who's going to get in here and – have a chance to hit the quarterback and really make him throw the ball early. This is an example of accuracy. You know, the read is not poor. You can see the man-to-man -man stuff happening. He gets run off. We're, we're running with here. Uh, we're running with right here. It's not a terrible read. It's a pretty good call um, against if they're going to jump in man-free. This needs to be a little tighter. You know, one and this receiver, if they could be – close that gap a little tighter. It makes it harder for somebody to squeeze through and follow underneath, and this is the underneath route. Right now there's a you know a good bit of space between the two. We want them a little bit tighter on that mesh. The other thing is, though, if, if even though he's not hit yet, he's getting a little pressure, but if he makes an accurate throw, if this ball is out front where this receiver catches it running, he does have a chance to turn this thing up, hit the sideline, and go make a first down, but the throw is going to be behind him. And that's where the safety pressure comes in. Look to your left over at the quarterback, see safety there. You know, he's kind of getting there. He ought to be hitting a quarterback, but but he's not. It's not the best angle. But the throw comes in here on the back hip of the receiver. Okay, so right now, if again, if he catches this on the front where he doesn't have to slow up, he's going to turn up and make a first down right there because this guy's not going to turn and stop him. But because it's on his back hip, he has to sort of slow up, and that allows his man who's following him to uh, get him down for a, a uh, stop. Play here in the game and an outstanding throw on a kind of a, almost a wheel route sort of concept for the uh, running back coming out of the backfield. A great throw by the quarterback. And A&M starts three by one, motion across. They rotate, get pressure, but just a perfect throw to that running back out of the backfield. Um, when, when this happened, again, it's, I think it's an example of A&M you know, they doing their own share of lining up one way. Here are three receivers to the right, one to the left. The back's on this side, though. There's sort of a clue. Back's on this side. But lining up in that, and then we're going to go this deep motion to bring him over to the other side, force the defense to adjust pre-snap. I think that's the, the main purpose for this motion and alignment. Okay, Force him to adjust pre-snap. And now we can really see what it is. They gave us man-to-man -man look on the outside. Safety is going back to the middle, and they are going to jump into some man-to-man -man responsibilities. That safety is going to pick him up wherever he goes. And linebacker play side now is firing, so it's basically this backside linebacker who's going to have to come over here and run with this back one-on-one. -on -one. And you just pre-snap in motion. You give yourself just a little bit of leverage. He's going to run himself out of it. Quarterback looks that way and makes sure corner runs out of there, which he does because it is man to man. Back is backer is responsible for running with this back out of the backfield, which the running back is going to win that. Now, if you look, they're bringing five, but it's six man protection. You got five offensive linemen. Here's your tight end. 
This is six on five protect. And Alabama's getting through there. There's pressure coming through there, and this is all on the QB. He knows he's got a big play because they rotated that safety back to the middle, sees what's happening. I just got to make this throw. And either you do or you don't. In the face of pressure, feet aren't great, but got the arm strength to put it on. Fantastic throw. Hard to be accurate when you have to flip those feet around like that. You can see it here, an even better angle. He sees what's happening, sees a guy running out of there to cover that flat man-to-man. There's your indicator. Is He's running with him. He's headed up here because I'm, I'm threatening him underneath. Now we got the one-on-one matchup that we want right here. And uh, linebacker does a pretty good job to actually get there and try to run with him, but that's just a perfect throw. Here's an, another third and eight, and they're going to go in break here in the slot for a first down completion. Another third and eight. Alabama showing one thing, jumping into man on the snap. But he hangs in there and throws a completion for a first down. There's some big time plays by this quarterback, but receivers getting open as well. Um, so, you know, pre snap, you got two hard corners on the outside. It gives you an indication of one thing with these safeties in the middle, but it's not two safeties in there, it's three. You know, and you see this a lot. Uh, teams will show you, I say a lot, but you see it some. Teams will show you this pre snap stuff and then and then run out of there, and those are your three deep, and they'll zone it underneath and drop these linebackers off the line of scrimmage, so that's a possibility. But what Alabama's doing is just the opposite. Uh, on the snap, everybody up here, three down and two linebackers, they're all coming. They're bringing five, and everybody else is jumping into a man-to-man responsibility. Here, tight end's going to have – it. Will, he'll be man, 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 and a safety is going to go back to the middle of the field. And on the backside – you got a man right there with the uh, back. So when they bring everybody, Alabama comes up, jumps into man free. And so the route calls for these in breaks on third and eight. You're getting one here, but it's a little deeper. And I think you don't, ball didn't go there because you got a safety waiting on it. You get in break here at the stick, and you even have one outside. And a bunch of those in breaks come open. You know, he chooses, again, you know, he chooses here, throwing lane. You got one outside if you wanted it. I think the safety probably took the one away inside. Biggest thing is, you know, protection holds up against uh, five. And there you go. First down. So we got another look at it here from behind. Yeah. So you can kind of see what he sees. The end break is going to be to his right. They put five on the line of scrimmage, including two linebackers. They're picked up. The thing about it is, too, his call, it's not an empty protection. It's five, but six who can check and stay in. So six-man protect versus five. He knows I don't have to worry. Back is able to get out because the guy goes back inside and gets picked up. And there you see the end break. So what I was talking about, I mean, the tight end is open. I mean, he can put it on him. He's got the arm to do it. That safety's there. You know, he's not really going to affect it. But because he's there, it just brings his eyes back over to the next two. And frankly, all three of those end breaks are open for A&M. They're just... You're in man-to-man, but they're open. They're not covered. And you make the throw. Earlier, this is kind of a zone beater for AM. Um, tight two-by-two two receivers, and the same route we saw earlier. Outside's going to curl route at the first down stick. They're going to switch it outside curl at the first down stick, and our underneath the high low is the back. Same route as we saw earlier against zone. A little bit of a different zone look here, but and this time to his left as opposed to his right earlier and uh, throws it for a first down. You know, I say the different zone look. They're rushing four, Alabama is, the four that are down in the line of scrimmage. The difference in the zone look is that there are more dropping deep here. And, you know, regardless of what the call is, corners are dropping and, and the ball's on the right hash. So nobody's dropping deep outside the hash to the left of the wide side of the field. But in the middle, you actually have two deep as opposed to just one. So I think at this point in the game, they had – done enough single safety stuff and gotten beat. They were going to try something with two safeties and go underneath. Thing is, you still get double curls, and he steps in there and beats it. Earlier in the game, you know, he took that curl route in the middle uh, because the way the linebackers were positioned, you know, the biggest uh, gap in their underneath the zone was in the middle. But this time, linebacker stayed in un- underneath that, and now he brings it to the next guy over and uh, gets completion there. I don't know if TV gave us another look or not. Maybe they did where you could see it from behind. Yeah. 
see it really clearly here again. You know, he knows it's zone. Everybody's uh, dropping here, and I'm going to get a curl in the middle. I'm going to get one out here uh, closer to the hash, and I'm threatening underneath out here. So they got to make a decision, and just like we drew it up earlier on that uh, underneath zone, we're looking at one under here, one under here, and because they've got an extra safe, there aren't four underneath. There's actually three underneath, and so it actually clears up that underneath zone stuff even more. Linebacker started to go out and – turns on the inside curl and now we're wide open right there and quarterback pumps it in that throwing lane good job by the receiver to know where to curl all right here's the big play touchdown to the slot receiver uh, late in the game quarterback under pressure uh, big time read and throw just a big boy play puts it on him right there for a touchdown quarterback really made some throws and this one under pressure uh, pre-snap they give you a two safety look all right a&m's got three receivers to the field one down here in the the boundary but they rotate it okay so they give you a, a zone look two safeties up high but on the snap four down linemen two linebackers they're all coming they're bringing six and you've got six-man protection with the back checking and staying in. But when they bring six, they are jumping into man-to-man -man everywhere, trying to close those gaps and sending that safety back to the middle of the field. And the route against that man, that they've that either an adjustment or a call, you're going to get a vertical there on the slot, outside receivers here, and inside receivers going to cross the field and get in front of that safety right there. And it's a perfect one-on-one -on -one read. Once you see what they're doing, it's just a matter of do I stand in there and make the throw. So on the snap, watch them rotate, show you one thing pre-snap. Now, here they come. They're bringing two linebackers. He's going to see that, okay? But he knows if they only bring those two linebackers based on alignment, we've got enough to protect, okay? So you just got to hang in there. He sees that, but you're getting exactly what you want. Now they're going to pick him up. It's singled up there. He's the only guy without a man-to-man -man responsibility. And when you get that matchup on a slot, it's to the house. Can I make the throw? And puts it on him. Big time play. Right, here's a first down sack in the third quarter for Texas A&M. And they've lined up with one, two, three with their hands down right here. And then one linebacker walked up a second and a third. So there are six on the line of scrimmage. But first and 16, and based on where the secondary is, they're not all going to come. It's just a matter of which side are you going to try to protect to, right, in case they were to bring them all. And on the snap, I think you, you got a bust. What happens is the one to the right side drops off. Okay, so he drops in coverage. If you look, outside rusher, linebacker on the edge, tackle peels out, picks him up. They go down lineman, guard, left side so this is stepping left sliding left for the left side of your offensive line right protecting the back side of a left-handed quarterback the problem is when he drops um, you've got center and right guard right here that are sort of treating this like they're passing this off to the right okay nobody picks up the nose guard with his hand down right here or a linebacker that's walked up whichever that personnel is let me see he's walked up nobody picks a, up the linebacker who's walked up over the left guard so obviously you know left guard is protecting outside this is that tackle who's firing off and he expects this to come back this way to this linebacker somebody he expects that center to pass this off back this way meanwhile something in this call has got your center and right guard and right tackle, they're all going back this way. Nobody's coming back to help on this linebacker walked up in the gap. So it's a bust in protection somehow created by lining up that way and getting confusion on that offensive line. And, you know, of all the guys you don't want to turn loose, it's the, one of those two closest to the QB. And this time the linebacker walked up. Nobody picks him up. He's free to the quarterback right here. Now, I don't know that he actually makes the tackle, quarterback does a phenomenal job to get away from him i mean this the nine is way more mobile than people realize and if you're right tackle on a straight speed rush to the outside right here you know if he blocks him then your quarterback's made this guy miss and is about to make a play but because he spins out of it and has no he has nowhere to go because the right tackle has not held up um so they get a sack on first and 16. 
see it from behind what the quarterback sees. You know, his eyes are not even on it because he's going to read field side on this first and 16 play. Knows it ought to be picked up. But this is what we're talking about here. You know, these guys are protecting left, have to. And, I, you know, something in this call did not allow these guys to step here and center pass it off back this way because you got enough. It's just somebody busts right there, whether it's center or, or it's the call. He's free to the QB. Again, quarterback, phenomenal job to avoid it. Put the backside gets him. A lot going on here. They show him a man-to-man look with a free safety, free snap, do something totally different in terms of coverage. They also show him a bunch of the line of scrimmage, but only four are coming on the snap. So if you look, there are only two guys with their hands down on pre-snap, one here, one here. Everybody else is standing up. Okay, so four standing up, two with their hands down. All six are not coming, but that's what they wanted him to think pre-snap was man-free, we're bringing all six. When they snap the ball, two stay off. Okay, so only four initially coming against what is five- and six-man protection. So trying to confuse him. I don't know that it necessarily works because they just beat the protection, and they bring a safety what's effectively off the hash ball, it's just on the left hash, but bringing that outside safety right there as the fifth rusher on this play. Thing is, Alabama picks it up on the inside. The center and right guard do a really nice job of passing this off and picking up that safety coming right here. But the tackle stepped inside because you had one walked up. The back also stepped inside and gave up this leverage over here on the outside pass rush. If you could go back and look at that and just watch the back and 73 and watch their action and kind of how this happened on the snap. You see the tackle step inside. Here they are again uh, right here. That's those two guys for Alabama. So you watch the tackle. He steps inside, sliding right, steps inside, and gives up that edge rusher. The linebacker stays on top of him and doesn't come. The problem is the back who's checking that side is also stepping inside. So already both guys have jumped in. You know, you got a little clear path if I can physically beat you to the edge, and you're going to get beat on that right edge. That's the problem. It wasn't necessarily picking it up, hat on a hat mentally. This is a physical issue right here on the route to uh, – AM jumping back into a zone look and underneath after showing man pre-snap. They're going to give up a deep throw for a touchdown at the protection it held up, but it didn't, and they get there for a sack on third and five. When you see it from behind, this bunch receiver, he's going to release. They're jumping back into a zone, so safety going to the middle of the field, and he hits what is going to be a home run if the protection holds up, but it does not. Uh, Again, they bring four. Here comes safety. It's the outside rush that gets there. Back and right tackle miss it. And it's a shame, too, because had it held up, he's going to stand in here and throw a bomb touchdown here on third and eight. But he's unable to do it. Here's a great example of A&M able to confuse the protection of the five offensive linemen and the running back on third and six and get to the QB. See, they got six up there, drop some off, and just flood the pocket here and hit him. That's the safety that actually cleans it up. So if you look at what they do pre-snap, again, this is something that worked for them in this game. That is only one, two players with their hands down on the line of scrimmage. And Alabama with a tight end, uh, they've got one standing up, two standing up, three, and four standing up. Two with their hands down, four standing up, six on the line of scrimmage. But the key is here, if you look, from the center over to the tackle, there are four defenders. One, two, three, four. So they have shown a little bit of an overload to that side pre-snap. You can even see the back looking over there because he's helping him in in protection. And only two, technically, all the way to the left of the center. But they're going to flip it on the snap. And on the snap, these two are going to drop after Alabama has called their protection this way. These two are going to drop out of there, and this guy's going to come from off the hash deep, and it confuses the protection. When that happens, so now when you start to play, they're gone. Protection is is this way with the back helping over here to the left, and he can't help enough. Tackle is stepping out on the outside rush. Nobody has picked up to the inside right here, which the back sees that. 
and the safety is coming and flying down in here as well. You're overloaded to the left because pre-snap, they showed you we got numbers over here to the right, but those drop and now you have numbers to the left and you're able to get to the quarterback before he can get rid of the football. 